At D23 2019, Kevin Feige got up on stage, triumphantly announced three new projects that will be part of the MCU via Disney+. Plus. One of those was She-Hulk. So he made the announcement, but he did not tell us the cast, nor did he tell us the release date. And that's what brings us to this video today. We're going to go down a list of 10 options of people who could very well likely play Jen Walters. Before we start, though, I do want to thank you for watching JLS Comics, whether you're returning or it's your first time here. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. We do upload content just like this every single week. Let's kick off this video with number 10. And there's actually two people I have in this number 10 spot. That would be both Ronda Rousey and Gina Carano. Now they're coming in at this 10 spot. And they're not my picks per se. I put them on this list. I know a lot of you have been calling for either of these two. Just the sheer amount of people suggesting them earn them a spot on this list. I really do feel like these people though, they're looking at the stature of these two actresses, not necessarily the breadth of their acting abilities. She-Hulk, yes, does need to look that part by way of her features, of course. And CGI will be a big part of it. But she also needs to pull off a fun, tongue-in-cheek, fourth wall-breaking Jennifer Walters here on the forefront of a show. Now, Ronda Rousey has been in Fast and Furious. Gina Carano is Angel Dust and Deadpool. She'll be Cara Dune on the upcoming Mandalorian Star Wars series. So I think I'll withhold judgment until I see that. But I have seen Rousey enough on WWE to know she's best in a supporting role where she's not taking the lead. And I'm sure I'll get a few comments on that. Coming in at number nine is Rosario Dawson. She seems to come up on these lists quite a bit, honestly. There's some great fan art of her I've seen of She-Hulk out there already. She's Becky again in the Jay and Silent Bob Askew universe, the upcoming film, the reboot. She's also the voice of Wonder Woman in the 2018 Wonder Woman Bloodlines, as well as Death of Superman, Reign of Superman, and a, a few other animated. Her schedule's open, everything is either done or is already in post. And just like Carano, she has a qualifier that also probably takes her off the table too, and that is of Claire temple from the netflix world and while it's true that there's a two-year clause in place currently freezing the characters from netflix marvel shows from being used elsewhere for two years feige has previously stated he would want to reuse some of these returning characters again so dawson charlie cox etc might be put in the whole pile for another year or so other characters that are one and done mahershala ali for example he's going to be blade so it'll be a few years well outside of that clause before we see them dawson also played gail in sin city she was abernathy in the grindhouse death proof films sin city two as well and you'll see her next in Zombieland 2 double tap. Coming at number eight is Allison Brie. She played on Netflix's wrestling show Glow, the gorgeous ladies wrestling. She was on Community and Mad Men and just that body of work alone proves she would be great in this role as well. Coming in at number seven, Angie Harmon. Angie Harmon's been acting for a long time, a lot of it in procedurals, and this beautiful actress personifies what it means to be in a courtroom with a pantsuit on. She was Abby on Law and & Order and Law & Order SVU. She was also Jane on Rizzoli and Isles, and she was the voice of Barbara Gordon in the Batman Beyond animated video in the TV series as well. We can even take it back to Ryan, Brenda Mitch from Baywatch Night. My only ask, though, is if she's cast, we need to get David Hasselhoff a part two. Angie has stated publicly that she wants the role. Number six, Mary Chieffo. Laurel, the Klingon Chancellor in CBS's Star Trek Discovery, is played by Mary Chieffo. It's her only body of work that I know personally, but I've quickly come to really like this young actress. If we talk about looks, she's a beautiful lady and stands at a strong six feet tall, which is great for a Klingon and for a She-Hulk. And I do know Marvel likes to develop unknowns, bring them up, and she's ripe for the plucking. Number five, Jennifer Connelly. She just looks the part, man. I mean, look at her. Just imagine her green. <laughs> That's She-Hulk. Plus, hey, her name's Jen. Anyways, I really enjoyed her in one of my favorite movies of 2018, Alita Battle Angel. Imagine Tom Holland's suit lady voice as She-Hulk. Well, guess what? That was Jennifer Connelly, too. One thing that both makes her a good candidate and yet possibly disqualifies her, seems to be a theme, is that she was Betty Ross in the Ang Lee and Eric Bana take on Bruce Banner back in 2003. And I know some characters are scheduled to come back, like the leader in Abomination, perhaps Betty, Thunderbolt Ross. So we'll see if maybe she'll be in the show in some form, in one way or another. Number four, Aubrey Plaza seems to make a lot of my lists. I had her on my pick for Catwoman castings as well. She's beautiful, fun, quirky, just the right kind of a mix that would play to low Feige and into the characterization of Jen Walters that we all want. She was awesome as Lenny and Legion, quirky as Ingrid from Ingrid Goes West, a hilarious mess in Mike and Dave need wedding dates, and what really solidifies her for this role is her tenure as April from Parks and Rec. Number three, Emmy Rossum. Emmy played with Dylan McDermott and Lara Flynn Boyle in a Boston law firm on the eight season long show of The Practice. But lately, she's had a long tenure as Fiona, the US remake of a show called Shameless. She has to bring up her siblings among the issues of their family and what it means to be on the south side of Chicago. 
Oh, and she sings. She got a few music videos out, so go watch those. Just change the color settings on your screen. Make her green and you can picture her, but she would be great. Number two, Eliza Dushku. Eliza auditioned for Mary Jane in 2002's Spider-Man, but that, as we know, ultimately went to Kirsten Dunst. She's voiced She-Hulk already in 2015's Ultimate Spider-Man TV series and the 2013 Hulk and Agents of Smash. Her distinctive voice lends itself perfectly to this character. With her role on White Collar, her FBI agent portrayal on Big Bang Theory, and her roles on both Dollhouse and Buffy, the Vampire Slayer and Angel, she's a prime candidate for this part. But number one, my top pick, is Stephanie Beatrice. Stephanie's a cop on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, so she's quite familiar with the TV show world, with cops, with police, with courtroom procedurals, something that will play very heavily into the She-Hulk story. In an Entertainment Weekly interview, she was asked about the role, and she said, this is a quote, I would die to play that role. And she said she's already working out. She's got a good balance of humor that will fit the MCU formula, familiarity, like I said, with procedurals that a show about an attorney is inevitably going to have, and she definitely looks the part of both Jen Walters and of She-Hulk. But those are my picks. I want to hear your thoughts, your picks, your top choices for the casting of Jen Walters, She-Hulk, on the upcoming Disney Plus MCU TV series. And that's it for this one, my friends. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. We do upload content just like this every single week. You want to be a part of those videos, all of our videos, new and old. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.